Ever wondered why the cost of living seems to be skyrocketing? We're delving into the factors behind Britain's economic crisis. Today, we've got a hot topic that's been on everyone's minds. What's causing Britain's big economic crisis? We know you've been seeing the headlines, but have you ever wondered what's really going on behind the scenes? So let's navigate through the twists and turns of Britain's economic landscape together. First is the impact of the Ukraine war and Brexit's ripple effects. The war is creating massive global uncertainty and straining supply chains, which drives up costs. With Russia being a major oil and gas exporter, the conflict has caused energy prices to skyrocket in Europe and the UK. This feeds into higher inflation as production and transport costs rise across the board. At the same time, Brexit is severely limiting Britain's trade volumes and access to foreign labour. Britain has left the EU single market and customers union, losing free and frictionless trade with its biggest economic partner. This has introduced new barriers, paperwork and costs that make UK exports less competitive. Import costs are rising too. Brexit has also cut off immigrations and worker flows from Europe that many UK industries heavily relied on. Sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, healthcare and hospitality are seeing severe staff shortages as a result. Combined, the Ukraine war's supply chain and cost impacts with Brexit's new trade barriers and labour shortages have created a perfect storm of economic headaches. Inflation is taking off without enough domestic production and imports to meet demand, while British firms are stuck without enough workers. Shortages abound, whether it's a fruit rotting in fields or customers facing empty supermarket shelves, these dynamics are steadily eroding real incomes and economic output potential. On top of these external factors, Britain has a long-running pattern of weak real wage growth. Views of austerity policies have suppressed public sector pay and welfare benefits. Private sector wage growth has also lagged far behind productivity gains going back decades, a trend especially pronounced since 2008. This unfair distribution of income meant living standards before the cost of a living crisis hit. Now, with inflation in double digits, most Brits have seen their real wages and disposable incomes plummet. They lack savings and earning power to cope. In a sense, the Ukraine conflict acted as an external economic shock that exposed the internal weakness and fragility of the British economy. Brexit self-inflicted additional damage simultaneously. The result is high inflation fueled by shortages and production issues, combined with poor underlying wage dynamics that leave citizens profoundly exposed to the crutch. Do you think government's policy response has been up to the task? The big question now is, where do we go from here? Unfortunately, we don't see many promising solutions coming from the current government that could significantly turn the situation around. PM Rishi Sunak has so far failed to articulate a current economic strategy that properly balances a stimulating growth versus fiscal restraint. There seems to be no grand vision to boost productivity and competitiveness. Their policies remain overly focused on tax hikes and spending cuts, the same old austerity playbook that has potentially failed before. With Sunak hesitant to take bold actions like increasing investment and making targeted interventions in priority areas like green tech, I think Britain may be set for an extended period of low growth and high taxes. The risk is rising inequality and declining living standards over the long run. We also don't expect this government to do anything major to reverse the self-inflicted damage of Brexit. Rejoining the single market, customers union or any EU institution is, is politically impossible right now. Eurosceptic fractions of the Tories would revolt and Brussels has no appetite for Britain trying to cherry pick bits of EU integration again. This means the loss of economic ties with Europe looks set to endure as a permanent drag on British trade and growth potential. The supply shortages, barriers for services trade and lack of migrant labourers are Britain's new normal. However, Britain retains strengths it could utilise better to manage the crisis impacts. London is still Europe's global finance and services hub. The UK has strong institutions for innovation, science and technology like universities and medical research. There are pockets of manufacturing excellence in aeroscope, pharmaceuticals and chemicals, for example. But fully harnessing these strengths requires the government to drop its fixation on cost-cutting and austerity. It should pursue 
active partnerships with industry to boost investments in skills, infrastructure, emerging technologies and export support. Absent this strategic long-term thinking under conservative leadership, I worry Britain may drift into terminal economic decline. Once renowned for ingenuity and commerce, it shows signs of becoming a stagnant European backwater, unable to keep up with higher growth economies. We hope British voters recognize the need for a fundamental economic policy rethink, one geared toward rebuilding damaged ties with EU markets as much as trade deals allow, plus retooling British industries to be fit for the 21st century. Difficult decisions lay ahead if Britain wants renewal, but without enough citizens pushing for a pragmatic pro-growth agenda, we fear political inertia will lead to compounding stagnation. That would ultimately only widen inequality and stoke more nationalist unrest over Britain's eroding prestige. In a sense, the country faces a fundamental choice, pursue a thoughtful plan for economic rejuvenation or risk fading glory. We hope wisdom prevails over pretty ideological battles. Britain deserves better in these difficult times. Is there a plausible path back to prosperity for Britain or could deeper, darker times still be had? What Britain needs is more savvy long-term planning on infrastructure, innovation funding and human capital development. The country can't austerity its way out of this crisis. Targeted investment is required or else Britain risks declining even more dramatically on the world stage. Some argue better integrating with EU markets again could also start the bleeding. But the political landmines around Brexit likely make that impossible, barring some dramatic swing back towards unity with Europe. Given the policy direction under Sunak so far, though, we feel the UK is primed for a long period of depressed growth, painful austerity for the middle and working classes, and loss of national prestige and influence abroad. Looking ahead, the Conservatives' instinct will be to double down on more austerity and tax cuts for the rich rather than bold investments in the future. Their fiscal hawkishness and supply-side economic views preclude major initiatives to upgrade infrastructure, education, R&D funding and more. As deficits balloon, their impulse is to cut spending, not increase it. We expect enduring austerity over basic services like the NHS, police, affordable housing and local councils. The core government roles in providing robust public goods for citizens will be neglected. Instead, we may see tax cuts and new regulation aimed at benefiting narrow business interests and wealthy donors to the party. Another round of reducing corporate taxes, relaxing labor laws, undermining unions and environmental standards and loosening rules for finance could be in the cards. That may spur short-term profits but won't deliver sustainable, equitable growth that lifts all boats. What Britain needs is the exact opposite approach. It requires thinking bigger and investing in the future rather than just slashing budgets. Things like ramping up technical skills training, building next-gen digital infrastructure and deploying patient venture capital for developing cutting-edge technologies in biotech, renewables, AI and other frontiers. Upgrading shoddy public transport across Britain could also make the economy more productive while transitioning from fossil fuels as could improve energy efficiency in British housing old building stock. But the small government shareholder capitalism doctrine guiding this conservative government won't deliver such a moonshot investment agenda. And Brexit makes economically integrating with European partners almost impossible politically. So rather than a grand national renewal plan, we expect Britain to continue its protracted decline on the world stage. Depressed growth, erased social mobility and expanding inequality appear the most likely path ahead under continuing Tory rule. Of course, Britain retains fundamental economic strengths it could leverage to turn the tide. London remains a global finance and tech hub. Top universities like Oxford and Cambridge drive innovation, aerospace, pharma, creative sectors and more give Britain pockets of excellence. However, fully harnessing these strengths requires the national leadership and common purpose to mount a coordinated industrial strategy, exactly what conservative free market orthodoxy evades. Without enough citizens also pushing for such a proactive growth agenda, the rotting status quo seems destined to endure slowly but surely sapping British dynamism.
While we'd love to be proven wrong, the UK looks on course to become a depressed stagnation case study held back by economic policy malpractice. For the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution now flailing in an avoidable crisis is travesty and wasted potential almost hard to watch. So in summary, war, Brexit, austerity, instability, loss of trade ties, it all adds up to an economic meltdown. It was probably avoidable too with less ideological decision-making from conservative leaders. Where Britain goes next hangs in the balance. But the crisis is undeniably hitting Brits hard in the pocketbook right now. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think we summed up the causal effect as well? How is the crisis impacting your daily life? And what hopes do you have for how the country recovers? Share your perspective. Be sure to subscribe for more breakdowns of major economic issues like this. See you in the next video. Take care.